Hi, I'm Crafty Patty, and thanks for stopping by. If you love to do dot painting, and you don't live by a beach, or you can't access those smooth round rocks from a local garden store, then here's your answer. Make your own. And as always, I will have a supply list and links in the description box below this video, so don't worry about writing down all the supplies as we go along. So keep watching, and I'm gonna go step by step and show you how to go from this to this. I have bought two molds from the Happy Dotting Company, one that will form a tea light and this one that will form a nice round stone for dot painting. Here's a tea light that I had bought from somebody else and I just wanted to show you that it has a lot of air bubbles in here and especially on the top here where they've now broke and it looks chipped. I was watching one of the videos with the Happy Dotting Company and she was talking about using a surfactant to reduce any of these bubbles. So let's try that today and we'll see if it makes a difference. To make an easy surfactant, I've got one cup of water in a spray bottle here and I'm going to add just a little squirt of Dawn liquid. mix that up a little bit and I'm just going to come in and spray the inside of the mold swish it around let's do this one as well and I'm just going to tip these upside down so the excess runs out And now let's go and we will make up our gypsum powder. I'm using the Ultra Pal 30 gypsum cement. This is a 10 pound box. I just wanted to show you how much 10 pounds is. That'll make lots of molds. And if you go on the Happy Dotting Company website, there are lots of great downloads. And one particular one is the weights of what you need to do to mix your concrete. So right here, I'm doing this purple one, and it will tell me right here in ounces or in grams. I am in Canada, I usually work in pounds and ounces, but my scale is easier to understand in grams. So I'm gonna be using the grams. And then it also tells me on the bottom here for my, this one here, it also tells me the weight. So I'm going to add those two together and then we'll know how much water and how much gypsum powder to add. I have added them together so we can do two moles at the same time. So I need 232 grams of water and I need 612 grams of powder. I have a little kitchen tailor way scale. I have set it to grams. It's on zero right now, of course. I'm going to add my bowl and that's going to create some weight. So we need to zero that out. So we need to hit this button and it is now at zero. I need to add 232 grams of water. Just watching my scale here. So I went a little bit too far there. Just gonna take some out and try that again. 216. Do a 32, right on the nose. We need to add 612 grams of the gypsum powder. So first we need to zero this out again. So we'll just hit our button here. Back to zero. And now we need to add the 612 grams. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this in.
does create a little bit of dust, so I'm backing away so I don't inhale it. You can wear a mask if you feel better with that, just to protect yourself. Go a little bit slower now. 584. Six, twelve, right on the nose. We're going to let that sit just for a few minutes to let all that water come up into that concrete and then we're going to get in there with our hands and mix it thoroughly. And we're just going to mush it between my fingers, try not to get too many air bubbles in there if we can. Just go gentle with it. It will be kind of like a light pancake batter. Won't take long to mix it up. That's only like a minute or two. Just feeling for any lumpies. And this will sit in about 25 minutes, so you don't want to be playing with it too much. I'm just going to knock this on the table and see if I can get any air bubbles up to the surface. I'm just going to pop those ones. And now let's pour it into our molds. I'll pour as slowly as I can. And look at that. I'd say their measuring was absolutely perfect. I'm just going to take my container outside and get it rinsed <clears throat> outside. Do not put that in your sink. You're going to clog up your sink. So we'll just try to clean that up a little bit here. That will come off the mold, so I'm not too worried about it. These molds will set up in about 25 minutes, but I like to leave them a bit longer than that. You'll find while these are setting up, probably even after your 25 minutes, you'll feel that they are hard, but you'll also probably feel that they're quite warm. So a little test for me is once they've totally cooled off, that is when I release the molds. So let's release this one and see what we've got. And these are brand new molds. So you're going to have to work it a little bit. And I'm trying to stay in camera. So a little harder for me than it will be for you to release it. But once you get it started, you can put, poke your finger there, work it around a little bit more. Bring it around. And then once you've got half of it out, it will pop out. I'm very happy with the UltraCal 30. It makes a really smooth stone. And I'm looking up close here, and I'm not 100% sure if the surfactant is the main reason that there's no air bubbles, but I've only got one right there. 
And I will have to clean this up a little bit with some sandpaper. We'll do that in a minute. And let's release the tea light. Again, it will be easier for you not having to try to stay in camera. But I'll just work it up, get my thumb in here, work it along. And here's this one. Again, it's got a beautiful edge on it with no air bubbles and it's looking really good. So I would try the surfactant because it really worked for me. And there's my bottom, it's nice and clean. This is a really nice one. If some of your cement stones are not so pretty, you can always grab a sanding sponge and clean it up on the bottom and the sides. And if you want to fix up any dents or anything like that, then get yourself some spackling compound and either a putty knife or a spatula, painting spatula that I've got here, and put that on and then sand it off and you'll be good as new. Your sanding sponges will have a coarse side, a medium and a finer side. So start with your coarse side if you've got lots of cement to rub off. And that's much smoother than it was. That won't scratch any surfaces now, so I'm happy with that. And now let's put some spackle on our holes and then we'll let that dry and sand those and perfect it. Clean off your surface so there's no powder, cement powder. And let's come in with some of our speckling. And I don't need a lot, but enough just to fill up those little cracks. And I might as well go around and fill up these pockets while I'm there. It won't take much to sand all that down. On this one here, I didn't fill my mold quite enough. So I'm just going to take the sanding block and just smooth this all off. And once you paint that, it will look much more professional if you're planning on selling your rockstone paintings. And of course, cement can be very drying to the hands. I'm choosing to do this without gloves because I just don't like the clumsiness of gloves, but please wear gloves if you don't want your hands to get dried out. Here's another one I had molded and it didn't do well on the side here, but don't worry, you don't have to throw those away. You can fix them with a spackle and nobody will know the difference. So just smooth it on there, let it soak into those holes and crevices and we'll wait till that turns white. And I'm not a professional spackler and this isn't the a proper putty knife, but it'll work. It's good enough. A bunch of spackling has dried white and is hard to the touch. Then you can come in with your finer side of your sandpaper. So I'm gonna come in and just go over it just lightly. Just enough to smooth it all out. Come back with your finger and you can feel with your fingers if there's any high points and go back and sand till it's smooth. And to get into the inside edge, I've cut a little piece of 400 
very, very fine sandpaper, and then I can just wrap that around my finger, and then I can get into the little edges inside here. And if you still want to get it more perfect, you can always go in and do one more coat. Just dip down a little tiny bit on this one. So I can do that one more time if you want perfection. And what if you're not happy with one of your dot paintings? You can always sand it down. So it's nice and smooth. And then once your whole surface is smooth again, just go over with some black paint or a darker paint than you started with and you're ready to do another painting. If your sponge is really getting filled in with all the spackle, you can put this under the sink and clean it and then it's good as new and you can continue to use it. I've just run that under the tap water and now it's ready to go for more sanding. And then come in with a just a very slightly damp paper towel and soak up all that excess powder so you're ready to paint. And you can see all the spots that were air bubbles that we filled in, a lot of them. This is the one that had the defect on the side. I just sanded that off. And that will be ready for painting as well. And it had that one little air bubble there and that spackle has just filled that in beautifully. I'm using Artist Loft Flow Acrylic and I'm using black because I do tend to like my black backgrounds for my dot painting, but you can use any color you want. Obviously, if you're using black, you'll use lighter colors for your dots. And if you want to use dark color for your dots, then obviously you're going to use a lighter color. For your base coat. Any brushes will do. Fine. Softer brush is good. And I like to paint my bottoms first. And then once I've got my bottoms painted, then I will let those dry. And then I'll come around and paint the top. I just think it looks more professional if you've got your whole bottom painted. Before I do my design on the top, I like to put my signature in the back. If you're going to sell your artwork, I don't generally sell a lot of my crafts, but sign it the way you want to. To write my name on the back of my stone, I did use the acrylic Artist Draw water-based pens extra fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this back side because I've noticed that by rubbing this black paint on my table, it does come off and you do not want that happening to someone if you've sold it to somebody. So sign it and then we're going to seal just this bottom area and then that'll be all ready to go for you painting your top side and then all you have to do is seal your top. There are several products that you can use to seal your artwork on your stones. You can use Krylon Low Order Clear Gloss. You can use Minwax. Liquitex Gloss Varnish. Folk Art Outdoor Satin Varnish. They all work great. Uh, it depends on what you've got on hand. If you've got Liquitex on hand, then use it. I've got a lot of this on hand. Unfortunately, this was on the older side. But in the end, it did even out. And the yellowing has gone. So that was just fine. The Minwax, use the Liquitex, 
in the full cart outdoor satin varnish. This here is the other type of cement, so it makes it look a bit more shiny. And here's the one on the flatter rock. So, your choice. Well, I have lots of cement stones all ready for dot painting and can't wait to create some beautiful stones. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video to see these stones come to life. Bye for now.